Fresh off the 2024 Singapore Motor Show, we have Kia's biggest, most powerful and most expensive vehicle on sale in Singapore. It's actually the EV9 as you can see here. It's a large SUV that has three rows of seats. Kia claims that this is the only six-seater SUV that's all electric you can buy in Singapore right now. So let's find out what it's all about. Show your car for the best price and get a free instant valuation. Get optimal value with our AI valuation tool and data-based pricing. Find the best deal with our network of dealers. We promise no fees or obligations, flexible handovers and successful transactions. We also guarantee full transparency, keeping you informed every step of the way. Interested? Here's how to begin. Input your car info on Car Buyer Singapore's app and press sell now. Our bidding team will list your car and all you have to do is wait for our good news. Upon agreement, we'll set up everything for you. It's that easy. To learn more, visit carbuyer.com.sg. Now let's return to the review. Kia EV9 has quite a unique light signature. Part of that is because it has this digital pattern lighting grill, which has multiple patterns for you to choose from. But for now, the only option you get is this kind of arrow looking shape. Also, the headlamps are vertical and they have 12 little square cube modules. And these work much like New Chicks LED. So when this car on oncoming traffic, it will just shut off the glare on that portion of the road to avoid dazzling other drivers with your bright headlights. Now the styling of the Kia EV9 is quite bold and it follows in Kia's digital tiger face aesthetic. So you've got this narrower pinched-in portion of the front grille, which is flat. You've also got a trim piece running across the whole front width of the car and plenty of gloss black accents. And down here, you've got active vents that open up to cool the batteries as and when the car deems it necessary. You can't see it when you're driving, but it does open up. You've also got smaller intakes here and overall, it's kind of very techy, techno vibes, but it's clean and it's smooth and that helps it achieve a drag coefficient of CD 0.28 which is quite impressive for a car this massive. Now inside profile, I think the most unique items on this car are the wheels. These are 19 inch units which is actually a lot smaller than what you would expect but this gives a lot of tyre side wall which adds to the cushioning and makes the car ride a lot more comfortably. Now up here, there's another strange looking contraption. This is actually the wing mirror, but it's not exactly a mirror, but more on that later. And then the door handles retract. You've got to press here and then they pop out and then you can put your hands in there and open the door. They say it's for aerodynamics, but sometimes I think we just put it here because they think it looks cool. But this is also a lot of car. It's over five meters long and almost 1.8 meters tall. So getting it into some of the smaller car parks in Singapore might be a bit of a challenge if you're not used to it. Now around the back, this car is styled like very much like how you would expect a modern day EV SUV to look. It's all flat and very clean with very little things sticking out. Even the rear wiper is hidden here underneath the spoiler. It only deploys when it's in use. Now the car has a pretty big boot as well as you can see from here. Now the third row of seats has been folded down and there's enough space to almost lie flat in here despite it having a pretty shallow floor on the account of all the electronics underneath the car. Actually, if the third row of seats folded up, Kia claims that this car has 333 litres of boot space which is, you know, reasonable. Now in addition to the trunk at the rear, you've also got a front trunk with 52 litres of storage and it's nice that it doesn't have a secondary latch for you to access your storage compartment here. Now, it's kind of shallow but it's more than enough for storing some tidbits here and there or charging cables. But there's this other neat trick that this car also does with this remote. Now the Kia EV9 and its eGMP siblings also come with remote start parking assist and to do that, press the lock button, press and hold the hold button and then the instrument panel will light up, press forward and this feature allows you to get out of tight parking spots or when there are other people crammed into your side and you can't open the door and it even works in reverse which I will demonstrate now. And again, there's no one in the car. Now, the most important part of every EV, the charging port, which is hidden behind this very nice automatic door. Now, this is built on the same eGMP platform as some other Korean EVs, but this car has a battery capacity of 99.8 kilowatt hours. So, this can take either 11 kilowatts AC or 22 kilowatts AC charging, or if you want to juice this car up really, really quickly, it can take up to 350 kilowatts under DC fast charging. Now, 
under 11 kilowatt hour charging, it takes about 8 hours to get this car fully charged up, but under 350 kilowatts charging, it takes 24 minutes. That is very, very rapid. Now, you don't get a conventional gear lever per se, you get a little twist-operated drive selector down here, and your start button is also here as well. Now, ahead of me, I've got a 12.3-inch gauge cluster, and here, a 12.3-inch infotainment screen. Between that, I've got an additional 5.3-inch digital panel for your climate control systems. You've also got wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Now, you've got a four-spoke multifunction steering wheel with your infotainment functions and your cruise control settings. Your drive mode button is here on the bottom, along with a terrain mode, which gives you some kind of added traction if you decide to take this 2.6-ton EV off-road. Now, it's all well and good if you've even got a heads-up display. Everything is very, very logically placed, but the biggest thing about the interior is the digital ring mirrors. Now, in the name of progress, I can see why they put that here, but there are a number of problems associated with such a system. For one, you don't get a very wide field of view through this little screen down here, compared to what you get from a mirror, and it only zooms out when you're in reverse. Other than that, you don't have much in the way of adjustment, and it's the same case on the left side. And also, you don't get a very good sense of how far a car is behind you. The depth perception is quite bad with this screen because basically, basically it's the same thing as operating with one eye. You can't gauge distances as well as you would with two eyes. So, and it takes a lot, a lot, a lot of getting used to it. I've been in this car for more than 48 hours and I still don't fully know my way around this system. I still look out there. So that's one thing to bear in mind with the EV9. Now, let's move on to the back. Now this isn't normally how you would be seated in a car, but in the EV9, there are only two seats, and there are individual seats in the second row, and they rotate. Now I'm facing forwards in the correct position and the seats are locked. I can pull the lever, and the whole thing goes around, and now I'm facing backwards. Um, this is a perfectly workable solution if you are trying to engage the children in the third row in the back seat, but there's not a lot of leg room for four adults in here. Still, it's reasonably spacious and there's a nice panoramic moonroof overhead. Now come on inside and we'll take a look at what else we've got in here. Now I'm in the third row of the EV9. As you can see, headroom is pretty good. Um, the seat's very comfortable. The leg room is serviceable. There's a big armrest here with a cup holder small little compartments, a USB-C charger, um, and buttons for controlling the backrest of the seat. It folds completely flat to extend your boot space. Overhead, there's an aircon vent. It's flowing right up here, and you know, the light controls are up here. So all in all, it's pretty serviceable. Now this is the second row of the EV9. These seats are the rotating versions, but you can have them in the motorized reclining versions as well, and those don't spin around. Now the floor is quite flat, you get a lot of leg room here, and there's a big drawer here and a tray on top, which you can use to store a lot of stuff. It's pretty comfortable and pretty spacious. So driving the EV9 takes a little bit more care and finesse, especially given its gigantic proportions and the digital wing mirrors because you can't gauge distances as well as you could. But for the most part, driving on a road, it's mostly fine because if you see a car in, the, in your side mirrors, you can use a rear view mirror or check your blind spot and more accurately gauge how far you are away from the car behind you. So it takes a little bit of getting used to, but that's fine. What gets a little bit more tricky is when you start entering into narrow car parks and pillars are all around you, curbs are rising up, and you have to be a bit more careful about where you're going and drive the car pretty slowly. But, helpfully, it does have a 360-degree camera so you can look out for where the little curbs are, the pillars are, more accurately judge where you are in, a, in more narrow confines. But on the road, this thing is actually pretty quick. It has 380 horsepower, 700 Nm of torque. Drove from 0 to 100 in 6 seconds, which is actually pretty rapid. It's not like this car is completely under the radar or a sleeper car, but you wouldn't expect a car as big as this to hustle its mass that quickly. And if you want to go even more quickly, helpfully, there is this drive mode button on your steering wheel. You can push it and put it in sport. 
and then when you put it in sport, the seat bolsters tighten up so you are more firmly gripped and you can drive a little bit more confidently. It's actually quite a nice sound profile. It's not, I mean, it's obviously fake, but it's actually, I don't know, it gives you a sense of speed and power. Now, the important thing about every electric car, big or small, is efficiency. So, this car with its 99.8 kilowatt hour battery is rated for 512 km on a single charge. Efficiency is rated at 22.3, which just barely, barely scrapes past into VES A1, so you get a $25,000 rebate. Now, I'm told from the brand that Although the car is specced with 21-inch rims in overseas markets, they had to downsize it to 19-inch rims for the Singapore market so that they can meet that VES criteria. But hey, smaller rims, more tyre sidewall, more comfort, and that's quite important in a big six-seater electric SUV. As Lionel will now explain. Right, here I am in the second row of the EV9. It's a six-seater car, so you've got two in front, two in the middle, and two at the back. Um, it feels like there's a bit of wasted space in the middle, but it helps with access to the third row. There's this folding armrest. Up at the side, there's these manually fitted window blinds that you've got to lift up and hook into the latch at the top. Um, as you can see, it's a little bit fiddly, but yes, it gets there. It's a little bit less fancy than the motorized ones, but arguably these will last longer as they're simpler and they're less likely to break down. Um, I've got ventilated seating for the individual seats. Another interesting point is because these are so-called captain seats, the seat belts are part of the seat frame and you come up around the centre, you, you'll be looking for your seat belts right here and there's nothing up there. That's because the seats rotate, so the whole thing has to rotate as a single unit. The recliner is actually pretty good. You can go quite far down, you've got a lot of leg room up front and if you want, you can sort of rack the seats all the way back until there's no more space in the third row for the you know, leg room. There's, the third row runs completely out of leg room if you do this and you've got a lot, a lot of kicking space around the front. But somewhere in the middle is a good compromise all round. Uh, it's not very cramped in the back at all. It's quite usable. There's a lot of headroom because this is an SUV. Uh, it has a panoramic moonroof. You cannot open the roof, but it's very bright and airy when you do this. It's tinted, so it doesn't feel all that hot either. So another thing is the ride of this car isn't what I would describe as a magic carpet ride. You can feel the bumps. It's a little bit choppy from back here, but not choppy in a bad way, in a way that you can feel that the car has is quite decently sorted dynamically. It's just that um, it's not, say, limo-like comfort. Still, all up, this whole thing has a very luxurious experience about it. And that's all for our first look at the Kia EV9 around the roads of Singapore. If you like this video, don't forget to like it, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to us, and also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, you know the drill. Right, until then, see ya! Bye! <laughs>